room. Bucks win it today, uh, this afternoon, 140, 129 over the Phoenix Suns. Come on in the room. Doc is our doctor. He writes out all of our scriptures. He gives us our medicine in our room. We are live out of the Cream City crossover. It's the guru, Trey Crosby III. Chris King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, TC and CK in the building. Uh, doing what we do know, JT, uh, celebrating his daughter's birthday. So happy birthday. Um, but yeah, we're going to do it like we always do. 140 to 129. The Bucks beat the Phoenix Suns. Get at us on Twitter at T-C-I-I-I-E-S-Q or in the YouTube chat uh, as well. We'll talk about this dub. Um, man, I mean, again, no Giannis. Giannis is a late scratch for this basketball game. Um, and the Bucks come out and put up 140 behind, I mean... I and mean, we're going to talk about this, obviously. Six guys in double figures from the Bucks. This is an offensive scoring, um, you know, just output was crazy uh, for the Bucks, uh, putting up 140 points. And all these guys scoring. Chris Milton back, 22 points in 25 minutes. So he was outstanding. Just a lot of great individual efforts, I thought, for a team. Um, and, and, and like I said, we're going, to, we're going to have to get into why they play like this, why they play like this when Giannis is, no, is not in the lineup. Um, guys hit shots all over. It looked like it was going to – and, again, I was impressed by this game because it looked like it was going to be – like, you, you could maybe say it was going to be a blowout as the whole thing, you know, from the first half because the Bucs were just killing the Suns. Uh, and then the second half, things got tight. The Bucs were outscoring both the third and the fourth quarters. Uh, I think the Suns got it down to, like, seven. Maybe it was as close as they got down to, and the Bucs had to continue to battle and finish this game out, uh, and they did just that, a 140-129 victory for the Milwaukee Bucks on a Sunday afternoon with no Giannis. Um, let's do it. Let's get our game recap. Let's might as well get our game recap going. Sponsors are by the law office of Daly M. Johnson. We need defense where? Off the court. Off the court because there was no defense on the court tonight for either the Milwaukee Bucks or the Phoenix Suns. It like a look like a, a, a gym run uh, for some parts of the basketball game. So if you need some defense off the court, call the law office of Daly M. Johnson, providing criminal defense, traffic, and OWI defense, temporary restraining orders, and injunctions. Um, yeah, as well as as well as everything, all your criminal defense needs. 608-893-8370. Go to his yeah, yeah, you go. Siete, siete, what's zero? Zero. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I got to get my, I say, I'm, I'm good. One through 10. I forgot the zero. Siete, zero for our Spanish listeners uh, and viewers. Service Central, South Central, Wisconsin. Um, you can call, go to his website, www.dmjlaw.com. Sign up for free phone or in-person consultation. Uh, and just going through the numbers. I mean, listen, they, they're eye-popping like Bobby Porter's. They're eye-popping uh, today what, what the Bucks did. You get 31 and 16. Assist from Damian Lillard, 31 five boards, 16 assists. Look at it, and it's efficient. Every Bucks, I'm gonna go through the field goal percentage 53, 63, 54, 54, 52. Those are the field goal percentages from your starters, right? All over 50 percent shooting. Damian Lillard was 10 and 19, four of eight from three, seven of seven from the line. Um, he did have four turnovers, he was a plus 14. Great night for him, 31 and, and 16. I believe it's the first 30 and 16 performance. Uh, in Milwaukee Bucks his 30 I think it's the first excuse me 30 and 30 points 15 assists performance in Milwaukee Bucks history so shout out to Dame for making that um Malik Beasley 17 points three boards three assists he was six of 11 five eight and three he had a couple big threes late as well in this basketball game Brooke Lopez with 10.7 boards three assists he actually didn't play and I, and again I know people were like well you know Doc took him out I think it had more to do with Frank Vogel not playing Nurkic down the stretch versus, you know, and, and so it was just a matchup thing as to why uh, you didn't, you chose not to have Brooke Lopez on the floor. Jay Crowder, you talk about apology forms. Jay Crowder with 18 tonight, 7 of 11 and 4 of 6 from 3. A guy who was shooting the ball early, early in the season, was playing very well at a high level. And when he came back from the injury, the shot has not been falling for him as much. Well, he had it on tonight. Put up 18, had timely shots, buckets all over the place, fourth quarter from the and that's what I talk, that's what I really like is guys that are able to sustain that sets success mm -hmm. for the entirety of the basketball game. We'll get to Bobby Force in a second, but Chris Milton, first game back to Chris. Just gotta clap it up. Cause I mean, 22 and 7. I mean, look like a guy and, and eight of 15 from the field. Look like a guy who 
came back from an injury, but was but was not on his way back. Look like a guy who. So I, I think I can cl- kind of clearly say he probably could have played in the last four or five games, maybe five, six, seven games. But they held him out for precautionary reasons because yeah, you just don't come back. I mean, he didn't miss a beat. He looked like he was shooting the ball well. Um, smooth, just a smooth player. Good stuff from Chris Middleton tonight. Pat Conson didn't do much three points. I thought AJ Green just uh, AJ Green is so smart. He's probably one of our highest basketball IQ guys. The Bucks have five points. Thought he played good defense as well. Patrick Beverly, four, three points, four assists. And then Bobby Portis was a star, especially in the first half. He had 25 in the first half, um, shooting like ridiculous amount. He ends up with 31 and 10, finishes 13 to 20 on the night and five for five from three. Uh, Listen, Bobby Portis made three, gets the five serve going. Um, and he had a few of them tonight. On the other side, Phoenix had a lot of night. I mean, Grayson Allen, talk about a revenge game for him 39 minutes. Uh, 30, and, and, and listen, the Suns wanted this basketball game. 39 minutes from Allen, 41 minutes from Durant, 40 minutes from Booker. Like, they were, they wanted this game. Um, and Durant was a shell of himself. 11 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists. He was 11 points on 10 shots. He did not take a field goal attempt in the fourth quarter. I don't know what's going on, KD. Something's up there. Nert had 8.6, 4, 6 assists. Uh, Bradley Beal with 28 and 7. He actually looked pretty good tonight. Uh, and then uh, Devin Booker had 23, 9, and 6. But you can live with 23 and 11 uh, from 34 total points from KD and Devin Booker. I mean, you can live with that. Um, Eubanks with four points, Mr. Get Punched in the Face. Uh, Eric Gordon had some deep threes, 10 points, two assists from him. And then Royce O'Neal really picked up some of the slack, had 16 points, five rebounds, three assists, really almost, I want to say, brought them back. He had some timely threes as well late in the game. Um, just getting into – what we saw, I think defensively, again, it was just a, it was a track meet, kind of like the air, the the uh, Adrian Griffin days from the Bucks, especially in the first quarter, where it's just you're gonna be able to score and who can keep up with who. And then, in, as a third, and, and I gotta give a lot of credit to this Milwaukee Bucks team because the Suns walked them down pretty quickly in the third quarter, and the guy who stepped up. So the first half was all about, and Damian Lillard played well. But the first half, and he played very well, but the first half was all about Bobby Portis. Like, Bobby Portis was on a, on a heater. Um, Dame shot the ball well, too. But, again, Bobby was just – he couldn't miss. And and Chris couldn't miss. And guys couldn't miss. And so that was that was a part of it to build up this 20-plus point, 20 point lead going into the half. And in the third, it, everything slowed down. Phoenix got stops. And the Bucks couldn't hit. And then – and I think they got it down – and they got it down to, like, 10, 8 points multiple times throughout this basketball game. And I'll give Frank Vogel some credit because they ended, I don't know if you noticed, Chris, but they had, like, late in the third quarter, they were down to one timeout. Like, Frank Vogel was taking those timeouts, trying to stop the momentum. And I actually think that's probably the right way to go. It's hard to do. And I get coaches probably don't want to do that. But um, but they ended up, they had one timeout with, like, for the last, like, 15 minutes of the game. Uh, because they called those timeouts to try to, to try to stop momentum. And I do think it helped them get back into the basketball game it knew it was going to hurt down the stretch and, and maybe that was a part of it. But, um, but yeah, you know, that, that, that was the Phoenix got back into the basketball game and then the Milwaukee Bucks in the late in that third quarter, Damian Lillard took over and put the team on his back. And it, it was, what was interesting to me was the fact that in the fourth quarter for what I'm mean, shooting in the third quarter, for whatever reason, Damian Lillard started getting the calls that he hasn't gotten all year long. And it, it's almost like the refs made this decision. Okay. Well, there's no Giannis in the lineup. So now we can give Damian Lillard some calls that, like, all these things have been fouls all year, but he hasn't gotten them. So Dame put him on the back. He hit the, he hit the, uh, the three at the end of the at the end of the third as well. Um, you know, Dame time buzzer beat at the end of the third. And the fourth quarter finished the same thing. Walked him down, got to seven. But then, again, just a combination of Beasley, Crowder, Middleton, um, late uh, Damian Lillard, as well as um, – I think I'm missing somebody. Uh, as, as well as Bobby Porter's. Right, who I think he had the six. He had six of his thirty-one in the fourth quarter. So again, all those guys collectively, just a really good game. And this was a really, really, really good win at home. Shorthanded, no Giannis. I appreciate it, Chris. That's what I saw. What you see? Well, you talk about why Dame was getting those calls. I do believe that there's some merit to the fact that look, this guy was actually attacking the rim with the intention of making the layups and not trying to foul bait. So then yeah. in the second half, you know what Dame did? He got to, he got went aggressive and then 
you know, they knew that he was making these layups. And so if he's getting hit, there's a reason why they're not going in and, and he's getting to the line. So I thought that was great. And then also want to point out after a weekend of just straight college basketball, you see a 140 to 129 game in the NBA. That's the difference between the big leagues and, and the minors, in my opinion. It's just like the shot making. It was great from both teams tonight. I thought it was it was great stuff to watch uh, down the stretch. Jay Crowder. I mean, we haven't really seen the ball be in his hands that much down the stretch and and him getting those looks but tonight he was nails in the corner knocking down threes knocking down uh catch and shoot buckets that like those are the contributions we need and then finally i'll say with chris uh a glaring hole that we needed filled in this offense was brought tonight the fact that he's able to create his own shot off the dribble the fact that he's able to spot up and make these shots look he put up 22 points in 25 minutes like this is this was high volume, uh, high efficiency from from a guy who's been out for a while, and that's what you love to see uh, against this Phoenix Suns team. So I, I thought it was a great win, and obviously this is what we wanted to see going forward because of the the West Coast trip that they they kind of struggled, and now you're bringing this into a game with the Phoenix or with the with the Boston Celtics, who uh, you you want to prove that you can compete. You want to prove that you can play with those guys, even though you have beat them by forty. It's just a lot of talking going on on social media. So I think the Bucks will be ready after getting two in a row. Yeah, we, we will we will get into um, this preview of this Boston Celtics matchup on Wednesday night in Boston. Um, I'm, I'm assuming Giannis is going to play that game. And again, it's. You know, we talk about it. No Giannis, no problem. Um, the the Bucks just absolutely rolled. You're right, but you know, I think that Giannis was clearly hurt for like the last three or four games. I I think you can see it. And again, when you're out there, it's no excuse. You're out there playing basketball. I'm not giving anybody excuses. You could see. I mean, was there some explosion issues with Giannis? Is he not finishing as well as maybe he could have? Is he not playing above the rim as much as he could? Maybe, but now I think he's gonna have like five or six days off before that um, before that Boston matchup. So yeah, I think it was important to get that rest. And again, the guys the guys play well. The ball popped tonight all over this afternoon, all over the floor. Um, and you just hit Phoenix with haymaker after haymaker after haymaker. And when the Bucks are hitting shots at this rate, they're just hard to beat. Like, and I know people talk a lot, a lot about the Bobby Porter stuff, and it's like Bob, you know, when he's shooting a ball like this, he's I mean he's elect he's a nobody's ever said that Bobby Billy, Bobby Porter's like stinks. No, I said at times he's played like trash, but when he's shooting the ball like this, he's a very good player. It's just, there are times where he doesn't. And again, like I said, like that third, the third quarter, Bobby had, a, it was a rough third for him. The second half did not go like the first half went overall though. Yes. And again, it's a good call fake shoot night, whatever, but Bobby Porter's is capable of being a high quality shooter. And again, he can knock down shots and he, you know, that's when you're able to do that. And again, I just think Phoenix does not match up very well with the Bucks. I mean, or at least the Bucks match up very well with Phoenix. Um, so I'm not, that's, that's like, just like Denver, it's a team I'm, I'm not very afraid of, even though they have a lot of firepower, even though they're a very good basketball team, the Bucks have everything that can match up with them just all over the floor, even more so when you put Giannis, when you add Giannis to the mix. But again, when guys, I mean, look, look how many threes the Bucks made. The Bucks were 24 41 from three tonight. They shot almost 60% from three. Do you count that as like a shooting? So I asked you this before we get into some of the comments. Was this because, and, 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 and well, so in the first half, it was definitely a shooting variance game, right? Like it was, you know, I, that was kind of some fake shooting we saw. And I think that bears out because the Bucks hit 18 threes in the first half and they finished with, like we said just now, 24. They don't, they finished with, with, with us, uh, was that eight, six for the, in the rest of the game, the second half. So, but they they also showed you, you talk about nails. They also showed you the nails in the second half in the third and fourth quarter when Phoenix got this thing tough and walked them down. And a lot of lesser teams would 100% fold in those moments. Um, so, I mean, I guess, what what do you make of that? Uh, do you make of this more of, hey, the it's a great win no matter what, but do you make of it more the Bucks just, just stomped them so much in the first half they were able to hold on? Or do you take more solace in the fact then the second and in the second half, third and fourth quarters, the Bucks was stained multiple runs from Phoenix and found a way to finish off that game. Well, I think you definitely have to look at the just the ability to take those punches and then throw one back because we've seen uh, versus some Doc Rivers teams that you know against 
like the Portland Trailblazers who went on a run at the end of the game and won the game. The Utah Jazz who blitzed you in the fourth quarter and, and outscored you by like 20 some points and got the win. So there is some progression in that. You have to look at that and see. But I, I also think that just having Chris Middleton in the lineup in yeah. general does something for you. I think that that's a great weapon to have. It's another guy that can draw people out and, and allow more lanes to get inside. And I think that's why you saw so much success around the perimeter. You got to the rim and then you got to got the kickouts, which we know will happen when Giannis is out there because – that's the, the the best interior force in the league. So that is very that is very good that the Bucks were able to do that because when he comes back now it gives me some optimism to where those three guys are out there the the big three of the Bucks that they're going to be able to penetrate, kick out to open shooters, and really I, I do think we moved really well without the ball and uh, we're, we're able to to get those open shooters just by by cutting and and rolling around the perimeter when people would drive. So yeah, there is some merit to that. Like I, I love the fact that they were able to respond to these big runs that Phoenix had because there were some instances in some games in the past couple of weeks where we were not able to do that. So yeah, I, I think it is that. But I also think just having Chris back in the lineup is huge because that's another guy that defenses have to worry yeah. about. Yeah, and we'll, we will get to Chris 100%. He, he was huge tonight. Um, I also think, like I said, just on a match from a matchup perspective, like the Bucks, can they play? And that's the thing about the basketball team. They, they are so good and so versatile. They can play physical. They can play finesse. To me, the Suns are 100% finesse team. They really can't play physical at for long stretches of, of, a, of a basketball game. And so this one got, like I said, it was a track meet. It was really finesse type of game. And the Bucks showed you that even without Giannis, they can play that finesse game right with you, especially when they're when they're hitting shots. Um, see some of the comments. Six hundred eight UW says, "Come on in." You know we come on in the room. Daniel Gonzalez says, "Bobby, Bobby, Bobby." He he was balling. I I, I can't even say anything wrong with that. Ole soon gone. I can't tune that. Says, uh, "Can't win consistently giving up one twenty nine. It's a win, but one twenty nine is too much." I agree with that. Uh, Green Ranger says, "Yes, sir." Brenda Ward says, "Hey, fellas, what's going on?" Uh, Malcolm Mack, it says, Dame is that dude. Dame fed everyone today. Um, seeing some more stuff about Damian Lillard um, through the comments, and I, and I want to get to that. So Terrence Hughes says, Dame was on every level of offense. All the starters scored double figures. The biggest thing I took was when Phoenix went small, Doc went small. Great adjustment. And I agree, Terrence. That was a great adjustment because, Doc, two things, two good things. I, I, I mentioned on Twitter today, I, I, I said, Doc is learning. Because you're right, he did go small. Was the second thing I also recognized, Chris? Who didn't get no time today? Who got a DMP CD today? Who was that it? boy, that Pat? boy Danilo Gallinari, oh, Danilo. did not did not get in the basketball game, and and AJ Green played over him. So again, I thought that was really big and and just good for the Bucks. But um, let, let's let's talk about Dame for one second before we go to Chris mm -hmm. and Dame and the distribution of basketball, like 16 assists. Do you, and this is the thing, and this is what we have to figure out. Not only was he able to score, he was able to distribute. He did all the things. He, he basically had every time he had he, he, the Bucks went up the court, he had the ball. So he he carried the offense. When the Bucks offense started to stall, he then took back over and made sure. Okay, it's down to seven. Got the balls. Balls not ball. We're, we're getting towards ISO. All right, let me let me take care of this thing. Let me make, let me let me drive us down the stretch. Like I said, late in that third quarter, and got eight ten points, and he finishes out. What? And, and you made a point because you said you know this is this is good to see. What do you need to see or what do you think has to happen for this to take place, even with Giannis in the lineup? Mm -hmm. Like I and because we saw this the last time Dan Giannis was out, Dane went for a crazy night, had a great time. Now Chris is in the lineup, no Giannis. At the end, and it doesn't make sense where people go, well, Dame just Giannis got because I think Perkins said at halftime, Giannis got to give him the ball, he's got to trust him more. I don't think it's about that. Like I really don't, and I don't necessarily know what the answer is here, so I'm interested to in hear what you say. I don't think it's about like James got to give him the ball. And he, I mean, it's not, I mean, Yas got to give him the ball. He does give him the ball, but the two stars are going to have to coexist. Like they just do. Like, and so it doesn't, it's not a like, I just don't think it's just your turn, my turn, your turn mentality. Dame has the ball at all times because again, Giannis has strengths too. So we understand Dame has strengths, but Giannis also has strengths, ball handling or catching on the block, whatever the case may be. They're not going to play apart from each other. They have to play on the court at the same time. They have to coexist. What, in your opinion, has to happen for all of this to make sense, this marriage of Giannis, Chris, Dame, on the floor at one time, and everybody playing at maximum levels? 
So when you say you don't think it's like your turn, my turn with, with Giannis and Dame, what do you mean by that? Because then I'll, I'll have a better answer. So what I mean by that is that people, I, I tend to see a lot of people when they're talking to me and say, see, Giannis is out and look what Dame can do. And this is, you know, and okay. I, and when I say your time, it's like, I understand that we can't go, Dame brings the ball up this many times and Giannis is going to bring the ball up this many times. That's just how it's going to work. And, or, and it's not also going to be Dame's going to bring the ball up every time and Giannis, Giannis should never bring the ball. I'm, t- I'm just telling you like that. You, that's not going to happen. Like yeah, mm-hmm. like that is that is not, and it shouldn't happen. You should be able to be versatile and figure things out. Like th- that's just that's that's not a thing where. So so I guess that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. So Giannis will bring the ball up some. Dame will bring the ball up the majority of the time. But I think people get upset and go, well, these three or four times that Giannis didn't bring the ball up, that or Giannis brought the ball up, that's why Dame wasn't able to get off. And so I guess so. My question is, how what what needs to happen? For Damian, because we know what Damian Lillard can do individually. We saw him do it in Portland all the time. We know what Giannis can do even with Damian on the floor because Giannis has done it the entire season. Damian Lillard has not been consistent to this level, and I'm not even talking about 30 and 16. I'm just saying at, at just a regular level of consistency from Damian Lillard, he has not had it all year long. In the games Giannis has been out, he pretty much has. What has to happen in your opinion or what do the Bucks need to do scheme-wise, mm-hmm. strategy-wise, Dame and Giannis, I mean, I come. You can come at this question from any different angle. How does it? How does this play out? Where Damian Lillard plays at his maximum levels, and Giannis is also able to play at his maximum levels, and we're not taking anything away from either guy. So I think a little bit of it is you don't have to force the two man game. Yes, it's been working uh, in the in the past couple of games and like crunch time and stuff like that. They've been pretty good. Uh, but I don't think that you necessarily have to go pick and roll every possession down the stretch. Um, I would like to see Giannis play a little bit bigger sometimes when Chris and, and uh, Chris and Dame are out there um, because they work so well uh, off the perimeter today off of each other. Um, but then I also think that obviously you said Giannis has to still bring the ball up a lot too. So then you might have Dame sitting on the, on the perimeter and waiting for Giannis to kick it out because we know he's a proven passer. So I think you have to kind of get uncomfortable with it to really be comfortable in the long run, if that makes any sense. Like you're going to have to have Giannis play uh, maybe in the dunker spot a couple times, a couple possessions as, as Dame works the pick and roll with somebody else. Um, because then I just think that it opens up a lot for this offense. And then you still have the option of Chris on the perimeter and that way you're spaced a little bit more out. Um, so I think that would work. And then I think, you know, when, when Giannis brings the ball up and he's got to take charge, I think you have Dame sit on the perimeter and, you know, moving off the ball and seeing if he can get some shots, setting back screens and stuff for him. Because we know, like I said, Giannis is a good passer. So I think that there has to be more action than just the pick and roll with Giannis and the handoffs and the dribble handoffs with Giannis and Dame. Um, because this offense is very versatile and you've shown that you trust most of these other shooters around the perimeter. So let's let him work. Yeah, and I, I I tend to agree. I don't I don't think it's like a trust issue with like with either guy because I think they they I do think they share the ball. I mean, look at Giannis' assist numbers. He's had triple doubles. He passes the ball a ton. Um, Nyrum Ganim says been saying there's a difference between Dame playing bad and him never getting in an offensive rhythm from the get go. Giannis is the better player, but offensively Dame's game is more inclusive. Here's where I'm at with it. At the end of the day. Damian Lillard has to just not be as passive. I thought in the third quarter when Phoenix started making their run, our offense got stagnant. And again, is it when things get away from Dame or or what have you? I thought Dame wasn't controlling the offense enough. I thought too many. I think the the first, the beginning of the third quarter started with like, I know it started with a Brooke Lopez. I saw what Brooke Lopez took a three. Brooke Lopez also took a squared up uh, shot around, not the elbow, but around the, uh, around the baseline. I know Beasley took a three and missed it. I know he took a runner. He made it. But I think the first, like, five or six shots out of the half were, like, Damian Lillard passed the ball and never got it back. But, again, my thing is not necessarily that he has to wait to get it back, but more so I just want him to be aggressive all the time. And the other part about that is I think he – and and now some of this may have, may have to do with Giannis, but I feel like the Bucs offense – when because Brooke Lopez outside the paint, when Giannis is not there, 
everybody in the offense is perimeter oriented. They want to shoot threes. They want to stand around the three-point line and maybe they'll slash or maybe they'll drive, but they're not standing on the elbow. Like Giannis, when Giannis in this offense now, he primarily starts. If Dane brings the ball now, it comes to different actions, but Giannis gets the ball on the elbow. Like for the most, like that's the majority of their actions now. He po- he's it's not a true post up, but he's getting on the elbow right around, you know, right in front of three point line type of deal. So driving lanes can be a little more clogged when Giannis is in the game because teams are expecting to help a little more on the inside. Well, when Giannis is no longer there, the lanes open up. So I thought Damian Lillard did a great job. One one of his better games, just driving to the basket. How many times do we see him actually finish under contact? And getting laid. He had a nice uh, reverse layup underneath KD earlier to the, uh, today. He got to the line a few times. Like, he has got to be aggressive. But when I say be aggressive, I don't just mean shoot the three. Like, that's not just shooting the ball is not. It's aggressive, but that's not the same. I mean driving and and driving hard to the basket. I know, and, and like you mentioned in the beginning again, at the beginning of the show, Chris, not just driving and trying to, th- you know, off balance so you can get a foul. Driving to score. Driving to score, driving to kick. And again, I, I think you know. I, I know I have people who disagree with me, but I, I I really think it's on Dame to just be very aggressive. And I know we talked about the game being his game being inclusive and whatnot, but he's got to force a lot of this action and just be aggressive. Because you're right, Giannis is a very good player. When he gets the ball, he thinks he can score a lot. Dame, Dame I, I think Dame is is, is I, I feel, and again, I understand why because he's new to the basketball team and you want to make everybody. But I think Shaq Shaq said the best room at the All Star game was hey y'all at the end of the day. This is going to come down to you, Damian Lillard, Doc Rivers, and Giannis. If y'all lose, ain't nobody going to be talking about, well, Jay Crowder blew the game. No, 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 no. This is going to come down to y'all three. And if and if you're telling me that an assignment or something is going to come down to everything's going to fall on me, I can't live with Malik Beasley taking the shots and Pat Conta taking the shots and going, well, it was their fault because they were open. No, no, no. If it's coming down to me, I've got to dictate it. So Damian Lillard. If the Bucks lose, people are gonna. I'm not right or wrong. They're going. You're going to be part of the blame. You got to take advantage of it. And so again, I, I think tonight he did a, uh, this afternoon. He did a great job of just driving and consistently staying aggressive, not just shooting the ball, but getting to the basket too. And he made a ton of plays for everybody. But again, when Dame is like this, again the, the Bucks are. I'm not gonna say unbeatable. Uh, but when, when everybody's shooting like this, they're unbeatable. But again, yeah, Dame going for 30 and being up up 30 and over 50 percent shooting. We talked about the metrics before. The Bucks are a very good basketball team when his when his numbers are like that. Yeah, and he has to stay aggressive. He has to stay aggressive in, in both categories of the game. Like you can't just go out there when Giannis is there and just settle for threes after you hit a couple. Like you're gonna have to still score at the rim, score at the mid range. He can't limit his game, and it feels like that's what he does sometimes when Giannis is out there. So I think if he's able to really find that balance of being able to get to the rim when Giannis is there, because uh, I feel like he has this obligation to get Giannis the ball off of the pick and roll. I feel like he, he dishes it a little too much instead of actually going to the rim and finishing at the rim, which we know he can do, which he's proved over the course of his career. So I think if he's just staying aggressive but – uh, from all three levels on the offensive end, I think this team will be in a lot better shape than it has been when all, uh, all three of those guys are out there. Um, somebody wanted us to react. Emerson says, uh, react to Grayson joining the Bucks prayer. Kind of cool. Yeah, no, I, I saw that after the game. Uh, Grayson Allen, uh, if you saw if you saw it, did, you know, dapped up the guys, got in the prayer, you know, the little prayer huddle they do at half court. Remember, remember when the Bucks lost to the Heat and everybody thought that the prayer huddle was like this, this is, I think it's back when Adrian Griffin was coaching, and they thought that, oh, my God. Like I, you know what? I'm not joking. I had somebody, if you remember, the Bucks did the prayer circle after they lost to the Heat. It was like a bad loss. I think the Heat had, like, everybody out, and the Bucks lost. It might have been when the Doctors coached. I don't remember. But um, but they got in the middle. They huddled up in the middle. People thought they were, like, having a team meeting. And it was like, no, they, they've had this prayer. They do this. They, they do that every single game. And I'm not joking. I had somebody at work, like, literally send me from Miami, send me an email. Did you see this? Can you believe the Bucks? Can you believe the Bucks? Uh, do they do this every game? I was like, oh man, y'all, y'all thought y'all beat us that bad. We had a, that we would have the Bucks would have a team meeting in the middle of the court. Y'all, <laughs> y'all thought you thought it was down that bad? Come on now. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought it was cool. Grayson and Grayson had a, had a great. It was so funny because I thought both of the guys, former teams, played good today. Jay Crowder played very well for the Bucks, playing against Phoenix, and had you know I'm sure he had, well he we know he has some bad blood for the Phoenix Suns. Grayson, I don't think he has bad blood for the Bucks, but uh, but he played very well, you know, in 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 coming back to Milwaukee. 
Yeah, maybe they should have did the the prayer circle before the game so he could uh, knock down some threes for this Bucks team. Maybe a couple of those series would be a little bit different. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe maybe that'll bite uh, Phoenix in the in the butt in the playoffs. I'm just glad that that's not uh, what we have anymore because uh, well we don't know yet. Obviously, B- Malik Beasley hasn't been in the playoffs yet uh, with the Bucks, but. You know, I, I I really do hope he's able to sustain his three point success. Um, even even in it's so crazy to me that he's still top ten in three point percentage, um, even with a couple of bad like really bad shooting nights. So uh, hopefully he's able to get into the playoffs. Oh, Beasley. And, yeah, Beasley. I'm, I'm uh, yeah 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 no, and I'm surprised John Hassel isn't in here today. Uh, of course, of course he's not. Of course John Hassel's not in here in, in the chat. But yeah, I, that's I don't understand people get so upset about Beasley and again. You got to think, and, and some of this applies to Dame too. Guys that are just shooting threes, like the like, of course, Giannis is going to have a better percentage because again, he's around the basket all game long. So yes, he will shoot a higher percentage than guys that primarily shoot threes all game long. But I, when people get on Beasley, because he will, again, Beasley will have those nights where he's you know three of thirteen, and and because he's open, like Beasley doesn't take a lot of bad shots either. So whether you hit him or miss him. Um, but yeah, he's he's gonna have two or fourteen nights with three, and it, and it just kind of is what it is because he's shooting threes. But I think people forget how many good games Beasley's had. You're right, Chris. That's a great point because he is ninth in three point percentage. Uh, and I'm sure tonight, today after the game, he finished. What what did he finish today? He was um, Beasley was five of eight from three, so he'll raise that percentage even more. Uh, ninth in the league though shooting three, so so that's pretty good. Um, let me see. Somebody else says something in here too. Green Rangers says Trey. Do you think Dame should focus less on playmaking, just playing? I think you say playmaking, just hunt down his own offense. Um, I mean, we don't really need two guys with seven to ten to ten assists, do we? Um, it's a good question. No, I, I, no, I, no. I don't think he can just focus on his own offense. I think that's important. But no, I, I think Dame should be right around six plus assists a night. Like I think that's a good number for him. Um, six, you know, six to seven assists a night. And up should be where it should be where he's at. I get Giannis makes those plays too. But the reason I say here's why I say no. The reason I say no is because Damian Lillard attracts the same level of attention that Giannis does. So how many times have we seen, you know, the screen gets set or Dame at the top of the key, whatever, and boom, the screen comes and he gets blitzed off the screen and he makes that pass. A lot of times it's to an open shooter. Sometimes it's to Giannis rolling. So yes, he will get assists just based off that alone if guys are hitting shots. And again, I even think when he's driving, if he's kicking two guys should be open. And of course we know when Giannis gets the ball, same kind of deal. He gets doubled. He gets, he has a wall in front of him. He's making passes to the dunker area. He's making great passes to the three. So yeah, I think, I think both of them can, can really rack up those numbers. And again, we know how good of a passer Chris Milton is too. So yeah, if got uh, really guys just got to get hit shots. Like that's, that's the main part is if you're hitting shots, the assists will rack up. But I don't necessarily think that Damian Lillard has to just focus on one thing over the other. Uh, but he does have to be aggressive no matter what. And when I say dictate the offense and control the offense, that doesn't necessarily always mean he just has to shoot every shot. But he has to be the deciding factor as to what happens. It's kind of like when we talk about Dame time the last three, four minutes. Like, I wish Dame approached the last three or four minutes, the, the rest of the game, almost like he approaches the last three, four minutes where he knows in the last three, four minutes, it's my time. I got to have a ball, and I'm dictating what happens. Doesn't mean I take the shot, but I got the, I'm got i dictating whether I'm passing to a Bobby Portis, where Bobby Portis typically isn't in, or whether I'm kicking, whether Yas is getting it. Dame Lillard is, is literally running the entire show late in basketball games. I think most of the games should go like that. Yeah, I think it would help the Bucks tremendously just having that consistency offensively because a lot of times it is, like you said, that your turn, my turn thing where uh, sometimes Dame will just be on the perimeter and just pass it to Giannis and he goes downhill instead of uh, really working all facets of the offense like it seems like they do uh, in, in crunch time because like we said, we saw Jay Crowder get clutch time shots tonight. We saw Malik Beasley shoot the ball uh, pretty well. So they're not – hesitant to go to their other options in crunch time when Dame is at the helm of the offense. It's just if you would see that more throughout the whole 48 minutes of the game, then I think you'd be in a lot better spot. Um, let's go to um, <clears throat> let's let's go to let's go to Twitter real quick at and because this is going to be our next topic talking about uh, uh, Chris Middleton at T Rev Sports Wisconsin says this man can miss 60 games a year. I don't care. The slander needs to stop. He then posts Christmas the stat line of 22, 7, and 3. 
Um, at Damon Giannis says, everyone mentions the help Chris provides as a connector on the offensive end, but for me, his defensive presence is underrated. I'm not talking about him locking down a wing attacker, but the help and recover, rebounding, deflections, all the little stuff on both ends. Um, and then at JP Davis, 1982 says, great win today without the best player in the league. Middleton opens up so much for this team offensively. If he can stay healthy, this team will be a problem. And listen, all those are, are correct. Again, I, and Chris Middleton is so crazy because you can forget how good he is because he, he's missed 90, he's missed, I think it's 99 games in the last three years, including that playoff series against Boston. You can forget just how good he is. You can forget how smooth of a jumper he has. I know somebody in the chat just said uh, Chris Mills has the sexiest, smoothest jumper. <laughs> um, somebody says, I can't remember who, who just said, I can't find it right now. But, but yeah, like, like, who said that Marty Moose? Yeah, like, like, I, I mean, the first shot he took was, I mean, I, I said, he's Chris Jordan. So I said, Chris Bryant. Like, that's, like, that's what he looked like. I mean, that turnaround jumper, and he had one in the fourth contested like don't forget that this dude not just that he had 40 not just that he had 40 in the phoenix suns in that series uh in in the finals but i'm telling go through i'm telling you just watch there was I, I i mentioned this before on this show there's a 2021 nba like playoffs montage of like great moments from the bucks and it wasn't well, and actually there's a finals one too watch how many tough shots like it ain't like it's not like the ball movement was crazy and oh the Bucks were getting all these open looks. And I'm telling, watch the 2021 finals if you if you have a chance to just to just look at it again. Some of those games and some of the games throughout the playoffs, they were tough. I mean, Chris was on the two two tough shot express and he was hitting them. I mean, time after time again, hand in the face, back to basket, turn around. Like he's that good. And when you have a guy that can play one on one like that, and I know he's got some dribbling problems. I think Chris has. To me, when you say Chris opens up everything, Chris has one of the better IQs on this team. Um, to me, bat, just basketball IQ. What his issue is sometimes his passes aren't always there. He has some bad turnovers because his ball handling is a little shaky at times, and he has a bad wheel. So he, so you know, I think his leg just kind of gives out on him every now and then. But I mean, if Chris is is seventy percent of what we got in twenty twenty one, you have Giannis and Dame doing their thing. Listen, and I think that the commenter is right, you know, about um, his defense. Again, is he the best defender in the world? No, but I think he's he's much better than the first 20 or so games. Chris looked kind of shaky on defense. I actually thought he played a little bit better defensively as the year went on. And even tonight, I mean, again, he, he has some pretty good moments. Can he lock, like you said, can he lock down guys? No, he's not a lockdown wing defender. But can he be smart, make help decisions, make make great plays? Um, and and overall be an okay defender, absolutely. I think I, I think he can. And again, if he's shooting the ball at a high rate, Scott, the sky is the limit for this Milwaukee Bucks team. I I said before this game started because Giannis was out, I was like, man, I'm not gonna be able to see much from this basketball team because you, you know it's just tougher to it, it's tougher to get a read on a team in a game where you know the star player is out. But just from an individual perspective, you can see where the pieces are. The question is going to be what team shows up. And, again, if this team is at the best of their best, Giannis, Chris, and 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 Dame, again, it's a title-worthy basketball team. No question about it. It's just – to me, it's just crazy what having another primary ball handler and a guy who can score off the dribble does for you because we've seen in, in so many losses where – they just kind of get stagnant around the perimeter and nobody's really providing that dribble drive threat. And Chris does it all, right? Like he's catching it on the perimeter, turn around, fade away in the mid range. And it just, it provides so much more for this offense. And that's what you're missing. Uh, the biggest thing will be if they can gel together, all three of them at a consistent pace. But what I was also impressed with, with is the fact that Chris Middleton has been out and he comes first game and just is it seems like he didn't miss a beat. And that's why I love his game because it is a consistent type game. It is a, it's a, a very level headed, steady games that, that he's going to be able to pr provide uh, throughout the rest of the season. It seems like, and, and it's not really a high risk uh, even though he has obviously had his injuries and stuff. It's not a high risk game where you're, you're wincing every time he goes up. Not like this guy plays at a slower pace, but he's very controlled and he's very smart. And I think that this is what the Bucks need going forward. I just 
I'm not going to say I worry about it, but I, I just am very curious on how it's going to gel with all three of them. Yeah, and I think, again, it depends. If Chris, like, the way Chris played today, I, I like, I didn't see that he was, like, in. I, I thought I've seen before where I think Chris and Giannis, they clearly have this, like, relationship where they're very, they're very good together. And there were times early in the season where Chris kind of got in Dame's way of, like, the two-man game with Giannis and, and, and Dame. And I think that kind of, like I said, they kind of got into that, okay, whose turn is it? Okay, you're doing this. So I, I didn't think today, and again, we'll, like, I think you're right. We'll see what happens when Giannis comes back you know, if Chris will get in the way of any of that. But today he did not – he seemed like he was a complimentary piece versus, you know, okay, well, now it's me and Dame, and I'm the, I'm the clear number two, here I come. And he talked about that. I don't know if you heard the uh, – I think it was Katie George who was giving the um, the sideline reporter talking about, you know, um, talking about – I guess she had interviewed Chris Milton. And basically Chris saying he wants to be a bridge. I will say, and again, outside of some 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 bad things that popped up as far as you know what they've said in some interviews, Giannis a- has said all the right things. It's Dame time. Dame has the ball. Not a, Giannis has said all the right things. Chris, that is that's what I want to hear from Chris Milton. Not hey, I'm the clear number three or I'm number two. When Giannis, he said I'm a bridge. I want to be a bridge between. That lets me know that is just such a mature answer mm-hmm. to say, yeah, Giannis and Dame run the show. I'm the bridge that connects all that that can connect the rest of the team into this. I, I don't know if there's a better way to put that uh, than, than 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 saying that. Um, because truth matters, it keeps yelling at me. Um, cause I'm just saying yelling because it's in all caps. It says uh, Chris took 33 shots to get 40 points. I, I mean, okay. I mean, I get I, I get that, but th- it's the finals. Guys are gonna take a bunch of shots. Like I don't I don't I don't mind that. Um, you know, I, I don't. You know, I, I didn't necessarily mind that. And again, they were tough contested shots. Like so, yes, he probably did miss a few. But I, yeah, 33, 33 to get forty is not not terrible. Yeah, hey, and what I do want to point out about what Chris brings too is just the fact that Giannis and Bobby are allowed to crash the offensive boards a lot harder when Chris is working. Uh, and getting his shots up. We've seen Bobby Portis really elevate his rebounding game this year in general and offensive rebounds at that as well. So if Chris does in the rare occasion that Chris misses, uh, it's always nice to have those two guys, Bobby and, and Giannis, out there to, to offensive rebound. Because, I, I mean, Brooke, you know, sometimes he can get a little – uh, poor on the rebounds offensively, but uh, just the fact that we have those two guys that that interior presence when Chris is out there uh, to to kind of clean up any misses and stuff like that th- that's great and it I think that'll be a big part of why that can be successful uh, Chris getting the ball more and and being able to work because you always have those two guys to to kind of clean up. Uh, speaking of rebounds today, Chris, I, actually that's an excellent point. The Bucks gave up seven offensive boards um today which is not, and I, i've seen teams back in the past uh well not just back in the past but but this season that were giving up um that were that were giving up i feel like four and five on one possession so uh so a good job there uh mon orlando says chris is a secret was a secret secret weapon marty moose uh, well there's a spirited debate going on over whether well i'll, I'll ask you chris do you think uh spirit debate over who's a better player cj mccullum or chris milton in, in the chat uh, what, do you, what do you think on that? CJ McCollum had a good night the other night, too. To me, it's no comparison, right? Because you have a guy with a ring. You have a guy who has been there, done that. And, I mean, just who would I rather have? I think, like you said, the maturity, the professionalism of Chris Middleton when he's talking about, oh, yeah, I'm just a bridge between these three guys. That's the guy who he's been throughout his career. And I'm not necessarily sure if CJ McCollum would have that same attitude. So I think – I like Chris over C.J. McCollum. Uh, no doubt, good player, but I would rather have Chris. Uh, even if you factor in the injuries, look, I just look at the whole body of work and the fact that he's been there, done that, and performed at that level where C.J. McCollum hasn't really done it. So I, I would definitely take Chris. Yeah, and I think the difference for me is – the difference for me is that um, is that uh, Chris was just a better defender. Like, like I think somebody in the chat said it as well. You know, you'd rather have a 6'8". He's a little bigger too, yeah. Right, yeah, saying. yeah. Green, Green Ranger said, yeah, you'd rather have a 6'8 forward over an undersized shooting guard. I think, yeah, 100% that's right. And then, I, yeah, I think that there's just that point of um, – of, of him just being a, a, a little bit better of a defender. Mm-hmm. Um, right here, we do have some audio. Doc Rivers on why Giannis is coming in from 973 to game. Uh, why Doc Rivers was a late, excuse me, why Giannis was a late scratch today. Let's see what Doc Rivers had to say. Just the injury, that's not an injury. We just uh, concerned a little bit. Plus, when you look at the schedule, 
said that you have one, two, three, four, five days off. Um, you know, um, so we, we kept we planted it in him, and he had to he had to do it, which we're happy that he decided to do. Okay, so so you heard that there. Um, it wasn't necessarily so. He basically said it wasn't necessarily injury, but that they were concerned um, about, like I said, this this, this previous injury. Because again, we saw him go. Th- I, I saw him. He was going through warmups. I thought, you know, he looked fine. Didn't look like he had that like the other night when he went through the warmups and and was uh, and had to stop. So mm-hmm. uh, before we before we move on, get to the rest of his comments. Are you you concerned at all about the injury? And it sounds like he's going to play against Boston because before the game, Doc Rivers even said, "Oh yeah," because Yaz was questionable coming into the game. And then Doc Rivers pregame about an hour before the game, you know, was like, oh yeah, I expect Giannis to play. And then of course Giannis doesn't play, like you said, late scratch. You you any any concerns out there about the injury and against because this time they said it was a hamstring, so it wasn't the Achilles. So what, what what do you think about that? So given what we all know about Giannis in the twenty twenty one Eastern Conference Finals, I wouldn't necessarily say ever that I have concerns about Giannis unless it was some freak injury. Um and he does want to play all the time. Uh, so th- that, I guess it kind of, I could see where Doc says he's concerned. But, you know, I, I think this late in the season, you just want your guys to be healthy and you don't want any further injuries with any soreness or any, you know, pulled hamstring, stuff like that. So I, I think it's smart to do it. I'm not necessarily concerned about Giannis because I know the mentality. I, I bet if the training staff didn't step in, I bet he would have played tonight. And so, you know, it's good to give him the rest that he needs because he's been so consistent and so great throughout this whole season. Uh, yeah, okay. I heard Martin said you didn't hear that. All right, my, my bad. The audio wasn't wasn't good on that. Um, at uh, Holiday Drew Time says, imagine if Giannis was out and we had Drew instead of Dame. No way we win like this. If Dame and Giannis figure this out, it's over for the league. Listen, I, listen, I, I, I agree. I, you know, and I've done some of the Drew Holiday stuff too. I think at this point, respectfully, I'm going to – just from a, me, just me. Again, I don't think everybody has to do this. I'm just saying for me, I'm going to step back from the comparing Dame to Drew. No, Drew is not Dame, never will be, can't be. He's not as good as him, but I don't know that it – I don't know that I have to. I think I've done it enough now to where I don't think we have to, like, you know, just, just keep beating down the horse that, hey – Dame is better than Drew. Now, if the Bucks win a championship, I probably will bring it up again. But, uh, but yeah, I think I think the point has has been proven at this point um, about those guys. Well, well, also, I mean, when you think about it, right? Like, imagine this team without Chris Middleton for as many games as he's missed. So well, yeah. that, that's the only yeah. way you need to think about it. It's not really a comparison at this point. I will say, two different players, two different guys that fit into different schemes. So, uh, you know, there's not really much of a comparison for me. But I just look at it the way that you know. Chris Middleton hasn't played a lot, and we're still been able to at least keep this thing afloat. Um, going Terrence Hughes, and I, let me ask you this question: um, It's the it's second time I've seen you come in and say you don't want Brooke to play in the Boston game. Hope Giannis plays. I think Giannis will play. Let me ask you this: Do you think that? And again, Boston's a different type of team. I know the Boston kind of rest. You know, they they rest. Um, um, uh, Chris stops. You know, every now and then, just I think off the strength because you know he's had an injury history. Do you think that like Brooke Lo- where do you think Brooke Lopez comes as far as matchup wise mm-hmm. with a Boston Celtics basketball team? Like I said, for Wednesday night, do you think? I mean, I, Brooke Lopez he's going to play, but how how much time? Like, do you think like tonight w- what we saw was when Nur- when there was no Nurkic, there was no reason for Brooke Lopez. Do you have a matchup issue with Brooke Lopez in the lineup um, when the when the Boston Celtics have have uh, Christoph Porzingis and, and their starting group? Yeah, I think you do, actually. So I I would agree with the point because of not only Bobby being so hot right now in terms of just his offensive output, but just the fact that Chris Stops is able to beat you in multiple ways. And, you know, he can pick and pop. He can take people off the dribble. I think Bobby is actually a better matchup defensively, but not only defensively, offensively, because we've seen Bobby punish these skinnier bigs. These They don't weigh as much as him. He's able to get these shots inside over guys like a Kristaps Porzingis. So I'm not going to say that Brook wouldn't play, but I would say that uh, you would definitely have to give Bobby a look at this, at this point with how he's been playing and how consistent he's been post-All-Star break. It's so funny because we have not really seen the Bucks run any true small ball because I, I don't know that they've run it really all year because Giannis has always been in the game. 
Bob, one of Bobby or Brooke has always been in the game with him for the most part. I can't remember. They were just, I know Bud did it a lot, but neither Doc or AG have really ran a lot of true small ball. And again, I, I think the Bucks at some point, I, I like, I don't know. I think their max lineup really, you could do something like a Dame, Malik, or AJ, um, um, Chris, Jay Crowder, and Giannis, right? Like, mm-hmm. you could, you could definitely you could run that. Too. that. Yeah, you you could definitely run that if if you if you wanted to, and I, we have not seen it yet. Uh, at Saint of Freaks says at, at Saint of Freaks says offense looking much better with Dame attacking and twenty two being back. We here uh, at J Yonk underscore season says Chris's efficiency was definitely a huge surprise. Um, at D Topolis says um, surprise how much faster we seem to play without Giannis. Uh, at Lazish Lillard says uh, Lizard says when this team is hot with threes, I don't see anyone beating them, but when they're off, yikes. Um, and then at Arnold Tunway says Chris was a huge difference this game without Giannis plus Dame's playmaking and control of the game bench boost from Bobby will push this team in the playoffs so again really good really good stuff Marty Moose um, now I think we're going to uh, disagree with this um, Marty Moose says uh, Bucks will need to play Ajax in the playoffs if we're going to beat the Pacers um, I, yeah, I just, I, listen I, 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 I'm not even like all the way disagreeing with you it's just the the what what they say the, the horse is gone the train has left the station like Ajax ain't playing like he's he's not I mean it's just it's it's just clear at this point like it is fourteen games left in the season he hasn't played I mean ship last time he's yeah the ship is said the last yeah. time Ajax <laughs> has gotten any legitimate playing time was under a different administration and mm. that administration isn't coming back so so yeah I think we're cooked on Ajax really getting some time. But I would also um, say that like I don't at this point in the season I'm not worried about the Pacers. Like I think their ship uh, yeah. their ship has sailed mm-hmm. at this point. They're not playing as good as they were versus us in the first half of the season. Tyrese Halliburton has had a drop off. And then I'll also say that like look, Ajax is just he's not shown enough enough to to be a guy that you're relying on for minutes. A- AJ Green has, right? And that's the best part about it like Doc has given AJ the chance to perform at a high level in the NBA, and he's answered the call. But Ajax just hasn't done that. Neither has Marjan. So that's just you, you just got to let that go. Let those two guys go. Uh, see if you develop them in the future. But right now, it's just not what this team needs, and they don't fit this team at this point. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I, I don't think you know. I think the Pacers are are, are pretty cooked. And again, I, I say this all the time. If you can't beat the Pacers right now, if you can't beat the, the Heat right now, if you can't beat teams like Philly with, with you know, Embiid maybe coming back from some, you know, from, from the injury he's at, if you can't beat these teams right now, you're not prepared to win an NBA title. It says more um, about you than them, right? Like, it's right, not. Right, right, yeah. right, exactly. Um, just going back to this Doc Rivers thing um, where Doc was asked about Giannis' willingness to play through injuries. He said, it's funny, we had a talk today, this was yesterday, um, he said, hey, I love the heroes. I just don't like the heroes in March. I like them in June. The only thing he said was, I don't know your body. I just want you to be healthy, and you got to use your own. And with our medical team, I guess saying, you know, you got to use your own head as far as figuring that out. Um, I don't want to get involved because I've learned that players can read that as I'm pressuring the player not to play, and you can't win with that. I just want him to know that it's okay if you can't go. And so that's how I phrased it without being involved. And I think it's important for him to know that, but I think our medical team has done a great job. So it sounds like Doc Rivers sat Giannis down and said, hey, I'm not telling you you can't play, but if you're hurt, it's okay not to play. That's what it sounded like. You know, and again, you can, I think we've seen, again, there, there was a night, Kimber, who, who, oh, it was Golden State. I thought I really could tell it against Golden State where the, the, the rookie kept blocking Giannis and, you know, it was like, you know, it was just like he couldn't get that lift in that elevation. I thought it got a little bit better. Um, but again, there's nothing wrong with taking a couple nights off, especially like I said, we're in March. It's okay. Take a couple games off, get yourself right, um, and 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 do what you do. Um, and Mon Orlando says W to Doc for that. So yeah, absolutely. I I, I agree with that with that approach. Uh, you want to do some game balls? Yeah, let's do it. Right, let's do it. Uh, I think you can go a lot of different directions with this, Chris. I'll let you go first with your game ball. Where are you going? Give you the crazy eyes, right? Okay. <laughs> Bobby Portis, man. I I just think that. Obviously, we've had the issues of him showing up in the first half and then the second half has not been to that same caliber. But this is a guy who comes off the bench, right? And he just provides that scoring punch. Uh, really gave the Bucks some separation in that second quarter, which is 
huge. That's what they needed, especially not having Giannis. And for him to be able to find his shot and, like we always say, let the game come to him instead of being a black hole, that's what we love to see from Bobby Portis. That's what will get him minutes in the playoffs, and that's what gets him just the confidence to be able to knock shots down in important games. So I think this was a huge momentum builder for him in general, especially also getting Chris back. It didn't really phase him. It just – he got even better, it felt like. And, yeah, and no, nobody's saying you can't when – you, when you're on a heater – Shoot all night long. I don't have any problem. I didn't have any problem with any of the threes that Bobby took. He's on the heater. Take those shots. But, yeah, once you start racking up those misses, you got to figure out different ways to score. So, again, um, good job, Bobby Corson. I, I'm not mad at that at all. I'm going to give my game ball. I really want to give it to Chris. But, I I, I mean, 31 and 16, I can't not give it to Damian Lillard. Um, he, he was too good. And, again, it maybe if the Bucks had just continued to blow out for the entire game, I could have given the edge um, to Chris. But Damian Lillard had to step up late in that basketball game, late in the third quarter and into the fourth quarter, had to make timely buckets, had to finish and close his team out um, because, again, you know, the Suns made a run. They got threes going. They got themselves back into the game, got it down seven. Damian Lillard shut the door on him. So I'll give uh, – I'm going to give Damian Lillard my game ball tonight. Um, let's look around the NBA. The heater up by 13 over the Pistons right now. Mavericks and Denver is a one-point game. That's actually a really fun game right now on ABC. I've been checking it out. We've been doing the show, so if you have some time, um, check that one out. Um, Celtics play the uh, Wizards tonight. Any other good games? Eh, not really. Um, Clippers do play the Hawks on NBA TV tonight. Wimby's playing on NBA TV. So some good stuff there. Um, Chris, before we get out of here, uh, what are your thoughts? Selection Sunday on the way. Uh, what are you thinking? Are we doing? Oh wait, are we are we doing a Cream City crossover? Bracket, like, what are we? Are, are we? Are we doing a, a bracket thing for Chris? I don't know. We didn't decide. That. Let's. <laughs> here's what we'll do. We'll do the bracket challenge, right? But you okay. got to be paying attention to our social medias. We'll probably cap it at, at so many people to do it. Um, I mean, it just depends on how many people inquire about it, and uh, and we'll get some content out there. Um, I, I would love to do it. Paid, not paid, okay. whatever, whatever you guys want. Um, I would be excited to to be able to host that. I think it would be great. Um, selection Sunday, man. I don't I don't know what the Badgers in Illinois score is. They're they're playing right now for the. I think that's the last. I'll look it up for you. Yeah, that's that's the last game um, in NCAA. I think. Um, obviously, I think Temple and somebody else is is playing right now. Halftime, Illinois is up forty-one forty. Okay, tight one. So the Badgers have really stepped up, and you know I, I want to shout out to the local teams, right? Marquette uh, with the tough loss to to UConn, but. Yep. Um, you know, you had UW Milwaukee and Green Bay. They they fought hard. They played against each other, and then UW Milwaukee lost in the Horizon Championship. Um, but yeah, it was good basketball in Wisconsin for sure. Good college basketball there. They're going to get two teams in there uh, with UCO- or with Marquette and and Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin is very dangerous. Like they went away from what traditionally worked um, with their kind of roster construction getting a guy like AJ Store who will be an NBA player no doubt about it I mean that kid is that kid is really good it might take another year but I but I think he'll be really good for them and he'll be good in the tournament look guard play is what wins you games in the NCAA tournament and when they only had Chucky Hepburn and you know a siege and it felt like that wasn't enough well now they went out and got a guy transfer from St. John's an athletic guard who can shoot the three and that can carry them a, a long way in March Tyler Kolick needs to get healthy. He will be back for the NCAA tournament. That'll work wonders for Marquette. Uh, probably still around the three to two seed line, uh, just because they they took care of business. And obviously, having a guy, an All American point guard, out like that, you're not going to drop too many seed lines. And so we'll see the matchups. I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited for it. And just there was there was I believe four leagues. Um, with bid stealers this year. So teams that weren't expected to make the NCAA tournament end up getting into the conference championship or winning their conference championship. And you're going to see one with uh, UAB and, and Temple after that one. And so there's going to be some really good teams left out. The Big East, which is uh, what a lot of people think is one of the best college basketball leagues, if not the best, uh, maybe Big 12, 
uh, they might only get a select few of teams in because they have so many guys tiptoeing the line, like a St. John's, like a, a Villanova, like a like a Providence. So those teams, they may miss out because there's been so many bid stealers. So it'll be super interesting. The teams that are going to be left out are going to have great resumes, and there will be some arguments on Twitter and stuff like that. But look, the way I think about it is if you take care of business in the non-conference and you at least do your part in conference play, then you should leave no doubt. And, you know, you really don't feel bad for the teams that are uh, right at the cut line because they just didn't do enough. And, I, you know, I don't blame them for it. But what I, where I do feel bad is some of these mid-majors who did a ton during the uh, regular season and just failed to win that conference championship like in Indiana State those are probably going to be some of the teams that you're going to see left out as well so uh, it'll be fun I'm excited we got what about hour and 23 minutes left until that selection so selection show tips off so it'll be I and I'm glad my Dayton Flyers are back in there I gotta sneak it in uh you know seven years I'm gonna be glad and hopefully we get that second round matchup with Purdue Deron Holmes Zach Eady it'll be a movie <laughs> it'll be a movie uh 608 uw says chris knows his college ball and then also well let me this was talking about sneaking it in there i gotta i got let me sneak in in my howard bison yeah one to me and you. going yeah hu one to me and they're going to they're going dancing uh back you know, to back me me champs go ahead you know yeah. my favorite storyline in college basketball right now maybe seth towns the, Seth Towns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, I think he was in the same freshman classes like De'Aaron Fox and those guys, and he's still a college Crazy. basketball player. He went from Harvard to Ohio State and then to Howard, and then he carries them to a MEAC championship. I mean, I love it. I think I think it's fun, and he he's a good player, man. Like he, he is. He, he's, not bad. He, he's a smart guy. So he'll if he doesn't play basketball in the future, I think he's got like doctorate and stuff like that. Like he's well, he's, he's fully taken care of. Yeah. He's been in school for fully 15 ta- years. He should have yeah. doctors, all type of degrees going on. Yeah. So he's but, fully taken care of. But I do think that that he's a really good player. And you know, you, you never know. Uh, you know, Howard, they're probably 15, 16 seed around that line. But it's just, you know, when March come, we, we're starting to see more 16 seeds beat ones now. You yeah. saw Virginia lose the UMBC and then last year with Fairley Dickinson. So it, it you never know. And when you have a guy like a Seth Towns, it's always nice. So I, I shout out to Howard. Two in a row is big. And that's uh, coming from a guy who is a fan of a, a like a mid-major I wouldn't say powerhouse yet, but a team that normally consistently gets in the tournament, I would have, I would have killed to have Dayton in the tournament last year too. So two in a row, that's that's huge. They take care of business. Uh, shout out to that coaching staff too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kenneth Blakeney, um, good, 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 solid, solid basketball coach. And yeah, I think you're, you're right. I watched that game. Seth Towns is good. Uh, and again, I, I think they'll have. Will they have a puncher shot? Yes, because we talk about Seth Towns. He can shoot the ball. That Howard team also has a ton of injuries too. Um, they've dealt with through the years, so that was kind of tough for them to get into the tournament, um, or in the, win the MIAC tournament, and get into the um, get into the um, into the field of sixty four. Um, one last question before we get out of here: six hundred eight UW says, "Who goes farther in the tournament, the Wisconsin Bashers or the Dayton Flyers?" So with what I've seen, I mean, obviously I would be biased and say Dayton, but I just can't do it. I can't do it. You lose first round to Duquesne, which shout out to the Dukes; they ended up winning the A ten. Uh, but you felt like you had that game one and you just didn't perform down the stretch. The guard play for Dayton has kind of been inconsistent. You only get uh, your biggest contributions from Deron Holmes. And with the way Wisconsin has been playing, I just, you know, being able to take care of Purdue in an overtime game when the refs were not good. <laughs> the refs were not good. The touch fouls on Edie didn't like the yeah, the yeah. running into the screen fouls on Wisconsin. Stupid, like boxing out, calling fouls on on Wisconsin. Dumb. And for them to be able to weather that storm, right? I just think that Wisconsin is going to be very dangerous. Uh, whichever seed line they end up on, I've seen like six seven eight nine for them like it's it's been a lot but they can do uh they can do wonders if they win this game versus illinois and then you know once you get past hopefully you're not a seven eight or nine if you're in the six five range uh then you're really looking at a team who can make a deep run so i would i would give wisconsin the edge for sure but shout out to the dayton flyers i'm just glad to be back yeah so yeah we'll we'll, we'll see how that how that goes out yeah i'm, I'm definitely interested in, in watching all that unfold uh, yeah, turn time. It's March. It's, it's college basketball time, and then uh, of course it's April rolls around to pick back up into being uh, NBA time uh, as well. Uh, any final words, Chris King, on a big, huge uh, one forty to one twenty nine victory 
shorthanded Milwaukee Bucks, no Yasuda de Kumpo. They figure out a way to beat the Suns and beat them down pretty much all night long uh, and held on to that basketball game as it, as it did get a little close. 140-129, any final words? Um, yeah, I would just say that it's good to pick back up where you left off. Uh, the, the good performance uh, late game versus the 76ers allowed them to kind of carry on and um, being at the crib it's always nice to to get another win and then carrying that into Boston who uh, you feel like you match up well with and a lot of people are picking them over you so it's a good opportunity to make a statement to them uh, to the national media and I hope we get that respect uh, after we get a dub and hopefully we see everybody that, that was in here today in the, in the chat next time and you know, be on the lookout for maybe a bracket challenge. We'll we'll talk about that. And, you know, whoever has to face Deron Holmes is in for a tough night. It's going to be a tough night. D. Holmes <laughs> walking to your building, Anthony Grant. Um, but, yeah, no, ab- absolutely. I, I echo all those uh, words. Yeah, I think, again, tough, tough, hard-fought victory. You like to shoot your Dame. Again, you, you like to saw from Dame. You want to see that continue. You want to see that continue into these games, 14 games left or whatever, with Giannis, Dame, and Chris. Want everybody to be healthy, and again, I think that ball game is gonna be huge. Yes, like Chris said, come back, Cream City crossover right here after every game. Uh, we'll be here after that Boston game on Wednesday night. We'll be on uh, me and John will be on Bucks in sixty Monday night uh, as well from six to six to seven on ninety seven three the game. Um, please, like I said, man, all the likes, the follows, subscriptions, please do it for us. Uh, it helps us a tremendous amount to keep giving you this content. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend about the Cream City crossover. We want to thank our sponsors tonight, uh, the law office of Daily M. Johnson. When you need criminal defense off the court, call my guy, Daily M. Johnson, 608-893-8370. If you're coming off a crazy weekend, I don't know, your team lost, you just got sports betting, you're upset, you might have – I don't know what you did. Uh, but, you know, whether you, you lose – maybe you like the kid – was it that Akron game – and you had your money on, and and I know you, who you had you your had money on, on Kent State. And Kent State and Buddy Fallon up one, and mm. now you got now you just oh. you done you you threw something into the neighbor's window, and now you got a loss on it. Whatever you're going, call my guy Daly M. Johnson if you if you had a breakdown <laughs> after that basketball game. Uh, 608-893-8370. So we appreciate him. Appreciate you all for listening to us, watching us this afternoon after the Bucks beat the Phoenix Suns. This has been a cream. City Media Group production from the guru Trey Crosby the third. Chris King. Hey man, don't take no wood nickels. Courage. <laughs> <laughs>